It's four weeks since Pat Lamb went missing after a night out in Maidstone. He'd spent time drinking here at Bar Chocolate. But after getting separated from friends, he hasn't been seen since. Now his family are hoping a reconstruction will jog the memory of anyone who saw him that night. If anyone who was out that night in Maidstone um, on Friday the 12th of December going into the early hours of the 13th of December, if they can look back at this footage of the reconstruction that we've made and think, really think back to see if they can remember seeing a man who was on his own, who was walking and looked you know, a bit unsteady and had a bit too much to drink, just really think and see if they can remember him because the smallest piece of information could bring us to finding Patrick again. Um, Patrick, if you're watching, um, just please get in touch and let, you know, let us know that you're okay because uh, everyone is really worried about you. We have to stay positive, it's, you know, we have to stay hopeful because as soon as one person stops being hopeful then there's no point keep searching, we have to continue and hope that there is someone because there is someone out there who does know does you know did see Patrick and does remember where he was because he ca he can't have just vanished. So someone must have seen him on that night. Someone must know something. It was just the smallest detail. Pat is known to have left Bar Chocolate at some stage after 11 p.m. on the 12th of December and headed towards Jubilee Square, where it's understood he rested on a bin and leant against a wall. He then makes his way up the high street and pauses for a moment outside Nat West. Pat then crosses the road and Jubilee Square towards Gabriel's Hill. He walks down Gabriel's Hill towards nightclub Strawberry Moons. At around 11.42, door staff are known to have pointed him in the direction of paramedics at the top of the hill, but he never goes to speak to them. Instead, he walks towards the Robert Dias shop, where he pauses for a while, standing in a corner. He's then disturbed by an ambulance and proceeds to walk back up Gabriel's Hill towards Subway. His card statement indicates he bought a sandwich at Subway. Just before 10 to midnight, he's seen again at the top of Gabriel's Hill. It's thought he crossed back over Jubilee Square towards Bar Chocolate and the Muggleton Inn. Pat goes past the Muggleton Inn and the TSB, where he's caught again on CCTV at around midnight. He continues to walk down the high street and turns right onto Pudding Lane. A few minutes later, Pat crosses the road past the old house at home and is seen on private CCTV, going into a car park on Pudding Lane behind some shops. He remains there for approximately 11 minutes. He eventually walks out onto Earl Street via a small alleyway at the back of the car park. He turns left and heads towards busy Fair Meadow. At 20 past midnight, he makes his way across Fair Meadow near to a pedestrian crossing and once again is caught on CCTV. A witness has also told police they saw Pat there. Once on the other side of the road, he leans against a railing. This is the final time Pat was seen. Patrick's last sighting was at 12.20 at Fair Meadow, right. um, but his phone last pinged at 1.34am um, within a five mile radius of Wick Manor Road. So we need people to think if they remember seeing him after this time in the town, um, because this will help us to you know, retrace his footsteps of where he went after that last sighting. Kent Police and the Kent Search and Rescue Team are continuing to look for Pat and hope the reconstruction will prompt new leads. Um, in support of what the family and Natasha would want would be maybe jogging some people's memories 
Um, as I said, we're acting on the information that we've got available to us and it may be that someone with that reconstruction will possibly come forward and say, yes, they remembered him and he was a little bit further along. Maybe they've seen him somewhere else further up on the Tunbridge Road. Um, we've reviewed the CCTV and we are where we are with that line of inquiry. On the night he disappeared, Pat was wearing a black super dry jacket with white writing, a black t-shirt with a silver logo, jeans and black shoes. He also had with him a wallet and blue iPhone. If you have any information, call police on 101 